Hey, how's it going everyone? This is going to be the complete guide of all the new features and tricks that they added on iOS 13. Now the list is going to be long, so let's just go ahead and get started. For this first one, I want to quickly show you is if you remove an application on your dock, with iOS 13, you now have a space to even everything else and give you a nice look. Moving applications is now a little bit different. You have to actually press and hold and then move in order to get the wiggle animation. The volume HUD has also been changed. Not only does it have a different animation, but you can actually press and hold it with your finger to quickly move up and down. Putting your phone on silent now will trigger this new animation that will alert you and let you know what position the phone is currently on. If you toggle down your control center and hold down in the middle between the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, it will bring up this menu. If you tap on Bluetooth, it will allow you to quickly connect to whatever Bluetooth device is available and you could do the exact same thing on Wi-Fi. A much quicker method than having to go into your settings and selecting it manually that way. You may have also noticed you can also toggle on and off your hotspot as well as quickly go into your airdrop settings for contacts or everybody else. When capturing a screenshot, the entire UI is totally different, but you still have your main tools on the bottom. But when you tap done, now you have the option to save in a file. And when selected file, you now have the option to store it either on your iCloud drive or on your phone. And you may have also noticed you can also create a new folder off your iOS device. Now if you bring down control center and force touch on the brightness, you will see a third option now, appearance dark. This is how you quickly toggle dark mode. Then of course, you still have night shift to toggle as well as true tone to toggle right here. If you go back and you bring down control center and if you force touch on the record, screen record, you may include your microphone. But not only that, as right now since I'm recording, you can also broadcast on social media platforms like Facebook and Skype. It's not showing on mine because I'm recording. And then if you force touch on wallet, you'll also see a new option to check out your last transaction. Another new innovation, if you go on your search bar on your homepage, if you actually type in a question for example, and you go all the way down, you now have the option to ask Siri. So if you need to quickly, quietly ask Siri something, this is how you do it. Force Touch is now supportive across all other iOS devices running the latest iOS. So if you have an iPhone XR for example, you will have all the 3D Press features without having 3D Press. Now features inside settings, there's quite a few they innovated. If you go into your cellular, click on cellular data options, there's now a new low data mode. The description of what it does is down there, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Moving on, if you go to this menu on the settings, if you go down to iTunes and App Store, in App Downloads, you now have the ability to disable the 200 megabytes limit when downloading applications with cellular. Moving on, if you go back to your settings, tap batteries, battery health, there is now an optimized battery charging. What this will do is allow the phone to charge at a safe rate to give you a better longevity. And will also push notifications on your phone, letting you know how long will it take for your phone to be fully charged. And if you go back on the battery menu, you will actually see a new percentage right here, letting you know what particular application is taking away all the energy. Now moving back at the settings homepage, you may have noticed that accessibility now finally has its own separate tab. In here, you will find voiceover, which is very different this time for iOS. VoiceOver got a major revamp in new features. I won't be able to explain everything in this video because there's so much you could do here. It needs its own separate video to go fully in depth. But if you were curious how to find this, it's inside here. Now moving back, if you move to display and brightness, you'll see light and dark. This is the second method for how to enable and switch between dark mode or light mode. But underneath, you'll see automatic. With this enabled, you can let the phone automatically switch between these two modes from sunrise to sunset or you create your very own custom schedule. Another feature related to this mode, if you go to your wallpaper, choose a new wallpaper, select a still, these wallpapers with a little circle underneath switch between dark mode and light mode. And whenever you select a wallpaper, you will see three new buttons down here. The one in the center will adjust to the size of the screen and well, the other two are pretty much self-explanatory. When you set this wallpaper up, however, and then we switch to light mode, our wallpaper is now white. Then if you switch to dark mode, our wallpaper is now black. Now going back in the accessibility, if you enable zoom, before when you triple press on the screen with your fingers, you're able to zoom but there will be a mini window in the corner. This no longer happens. Now you can freely zoom across all your screens and then once again using three fingers to tap, double tap on the screen, it will go back to normal. Now as soon as this feature gets added, if you want to change the font, you simply just go into your general and then go scroll down where you see fonts. From here, you could download third-party apps on the App Store when they become available, and this will be where you select all the different fonts you want to use. Moving on, you can now change the destination whenever you download certain stuff on Safari. 
it by going to your settings go down to Safari and you will see a new download option right here you can select if you want it to install inside your phone internal storage or iCloud want to have a little bit more feedback whenever your phone unlocks with face ID there's a way you could enable something like this if you go back to your settings go in accessibility tap face ID and animation and enabled hectic feedback now whenever you unlock your phone or are paying with Apple pay it will now vibrate and let you know that it unlocked a new feature that has to be manually enabled on iOS 13 silent unknown colors if you go into your phone scroll down a bit and right here if you, when this is enabled it will silent unknown colors in other words it will send them straight to voicemail goodbye unknown numbers and spam colors now for keyboard shortcuts we actually got a handful of new features if you double tap with three fingers on the screen it will undo whatever you've done and now if you slide three fingers on the screen to the right it will redo it and on a keyboard itself the emoji icon as well as the globe are now separate now you can quickly go to your emojis without needing to switch between keyboards swift key support is now available on ios so now you can swift between words and symbols to actually create words selecting a word simply just tap on it then quickly double tap and tap on it again to get the select highlighter to pop up and if you use three fingers on the screen and pinch out it will actually copy and then pinch in with three fingers and it'll paste it and then if you use three fingers on the screen and hold for a little bit this new menu pop up here you can actually copy cut paste undo on this little black window on top keyboard now support memoji stickers to go to this part of the menu simply just tap on the emoji and double tap on the recent emoji used and right here you'll see your new memoji stickers as well as the other and emoji stickers that they just recently added and if you take a look at that profile pic on top you could actually send this note to somebody not just to view but you also have the option to let them edit or see what you changed and then in this menu right here the dots on the top right hand corner if you tap on this this allows you to quickly view your attachments if you're looking for a certain document you just can't find so far you also got some new innovations when you find yourself at this menu you can actually force touch to take a quick preview of the website Requesting for a desktop site is as easy as simply tapping on the two A's that are on the top corner and hit request desktop website. Once again, back in those two A menu, you can also enable high toolbar to give you a full full screen browsing experience. And when this is enabled, you could still slide to go back or forward. And to go back to normal, simply just tap on the search bar. Then when taking a screenshot on the web browser, you now have the option to do full page. When you select this, you can doodle highlight whatever you like to do and you see an image slider on the side so you can scroll through these many different pages just however it cannot be saved on your camera roll it has to be saved in your folder when scrolling on your iPhone you actually have the option to actually tap on the little scroller on the side and use your hand to manually scroll down quicker or on top faster and then if the letter and text are too small for you you can actually tap the A's and hit the plus or minus like you do on any web browser on a computer and also in this little menu you also have additional web browsing options if you select on website settings you have the option to always decline or deny location microphone or camera use safari now supports download as it now has a download manager whenever you download like an mp4 file you can not only see the progress of the download but now fully supports unzipping files and going through all the contents as well as playing audio or viewing video of the file the photo application also got a bunch of new features as well. For example, once you select a photo and you want to crop, you now have the option to flip reverse. Another hidden feature is now you're able to clip together live photos and to convert them into a full video. So here you see we have a few. Simply select all of them by either tapping the select button on top and go down and here you see a bunch of other options but we're going to go ahead and select save as video. Let it finish and there's our whole video. When the video is playing, there's actually a quick mute button down here on the lower right hand side. Now you may have noticed the recently added album is now gone. Where normally you will find your latest added photo, images, all that stuff. Now the way to currently find it is by going back to photos and down here where it says years, months, days, select all photos and it's always going to be at the very bottom. Pinching and zoom support with your finger is now supportive on these albums. So if there's a photo you want to zoom in, you can simply do that. And you can also zoom, pinch it out to zoom out. You can also do this by hitting the plus or minus icons on the top right hand corner. 
Forge Press is now fully supportive. This allows you to not only see the photo a little bit bigger, but it also gives you additional options on the bottom. When playing a video, now we're able to actually edit it just like we do on photos. For instance, you could change, you can adjust the contrast, the brightness, as well as add some filters, adjust the angle if it came out crooked, you could do all that. Now when sharing a photo, you can actually include the full resolution. When you're sharing, you not only see the new share sheets, but on top when you're sending these photos, there's actually a new option. Here you cannot only just send an individual photo, but you can actually create an iCloud link. You can also remove location of the share file and you can actually select full original capture, aka full resolution. We can now do all that on our phone. On iMessage, we now have profiles on iOS 13. The three dots on this side of the menu, tap on this and select edit name and photo. Here is basically a brief overlay of your profile. You could change the profile pic, your name, and also adjust some of its share settings. You have full access to use your Memoji as your profile. And once you take the photo, you have these backgrounds to choose from. Now a new integration they added during conversation text. If you tap on the screen using two fingers once, it will actually bring it to the editor. Here you're able to quickly select or forward text messages by just one click instead of before we had an enabled edit. New Animojis has been recently added and if you edit your Memoji, there's a lot more facial features you can add and also accessories. You can actually add AirPods and you can actually select if you want dual, right side or left side only. It's really weird. Moving on, the Apple Mail app also got some new features. If you slide left on the email and you tap the more option, you are now able to mute it. And if that's not enough, you are now able to block certain contacts by simply going under contact information, scroll down a bit, and you can block contact right here. Another cool new trick is now when you're actually sending an email, if you tap on that little L arrow looking bracket, you are now given new tools to change the font, add photos, take a photo, scan documents, or even draw when replying to any email. And another thing new, when you're flagging your emails by tapping on the little crooked arrow icon next to the trash, you can now change the color of that flag icon now. Moving on, opening up the clock app, there is now a consistent sleep bedtime setting to help you get a better night's sleep. The setup process is really easy. The application will just remind you when it's time for you to go to bed and will set an alarm to wake you up. And then if you open up your health app, it will also keep track of how long you slept the past other days. In this health app is also where you'll find the hearing health management, which all does is just lets you know if you're too exposed on long decibel levels for a long period of time, which may lead to hearing loss. But once back at the bedtime settings, here there's the option to go back and correct and change a couple of things. The timer section, whenever you set a timer, let's say for 10 more minutes, it will actually show you in real time what time would it be at that time, as well as now gives you a cool circular animation as well. In that new file application that we got, if you go on this side of the menu, you could tap the three dots on top and it will open up a little camera for you to scan a document and save it on your iCloud drive. This way, for example, you can go on your desktop and view that document. Then when using Apple Maps and you're already heading towards a direction, you can actually share that ETA to a friend or somebody that you're meeting up for them to have an idea exactly when you're going to arrive. But then of course we also have the Apple Viewfinder. I think this is really cool. You can move around freely and you can also tap ahead to move further to the next side of the street. Going back to the homepage, if you open up the App Store application, if you're looking for your update tabs, that is no longer here. It has been replaced by Arcade, which is going to be available later on. But if you view your updates, simply tap on the Today tab and click on your profile pic. This is where you'll see the last updated application or you can manually update it on this menu. You can also swipe left if you want to delete the application off your phone. If you open up Shortcuts, Shortcuts has been entirely redesigned as well. A new feature they added is that now you can actually tap and toggle some of these shortcuts. In the music app, you are now able to actually play the lyrics live while the audio is playing by simply tapping on this icon. You can see the lyrics and you can also tap to skip ahead as well. And then the other tab with the three lines, this is actually your playlist. If you're listening to a station, you can actually rearrange it, adjust it however you like if you want whatever track to go next. And there you guys have it. That was the complete video guide of all the new hidden features that they added on iOS 13. Now, originally this video was going to be a 30 minute long video, but I managed to shorten it up as well as keeping things very informative. You may have to slow it down. I understand, but I know not everybody has time to watch a 30 minute video. So that's why I did this. So if you guys appreciate the hard work, the time and effort that took place to create this, it'll mean a lot if you can actually leave a like as well as get subscribed if you're not. 
for the next upcoming video and feel free to comment down below if there's another feature that you discovered and you wish to have feature for part two leave that comment down below but as always thank you once again for watching take care and i'll catch you in the next one peace